Hello everyone and welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal. I am Nancy and on today's vlog we are going to be planting foxglove. Now when you're looking at this raised bed your first thoughts are that's a mess and yes it really is. It has weeds in it, the soil level is too low, but all I see is this right here. This is foxglove. And this is a plant that I have been trying to grow for years and years and years to get established in my garden. And I have finally got it established. So what I'm gonna do today is dig this clump up and then I will divide the plants and this is gonna be my foxglove bed. Now I also have some asparagus right here. I've got three uh, asparagus plants, maybe four. It looks like four. I am going to dig those up and I'm actually going to put those in a five gallon bucket. The most prolific asparagus I have ever seen was growing in a five gallon bucket. So I'm gonna try to do that with these. And you'll see I just pitched my eggshells in here. So I will crush those up and uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do is get all of the weeds out I have gotten this bed cleaned out here is the asparagus it looks good and healthy so I'm going to pop that up in just a little bit here is my pile of weeds I will give those to the new chicken that I just got her name is Henny Penny and I was careful to make sure there were no foxglove leaves in there. And this is the foxglove that I dug up. So the next thing that I'm going to do is amend my soil so that it'll be the best environment for the foxglove. So you see that I need to raise the soil level. I've got six bags of flower and vegetable garden soil plus, plus fertilizer because are heavy feeders and I've got this at Lowe's I think the stay green is the Lowe's brand so I'm going to sprinkle three bags then I am going to put this is about a half of a two gallon bucket of sand foxglove like to be well drained so I am going to sprinkle this on and then I'll put the other three bags of soil on So this is six bags of good garden soil, about two and a half gallons of sand that I have worked in. Everything looks good. So the next step that we will need to do is divide the foxglove. I have my foxglove divided and they look pretty rough but I saved just as much root as I could on each plant. I ended up getting nine plants out of this. I did find the little roly-poly bugs and snails, and they were treats for Miss Henny Penny. So the next thing that I wanna do is uh, dig me nine holes and get these in my soil in the raised bed. So I now have the foxglove planted in the soil. And I think I told you that if you go to the nursery and buy one plant, it's about $15. So I have $135 in foxglove plants right here that I grew from a pack of seeds that was around $2. And I also wanted to tell you that the way I finally got this to grow, I planted my seeds in this bed in October, in the fall and then just let them grow through the winter. So let's talk about the conditions that foxglove like. They do like full sun uh, with some shade. They can stand some shade. They like um, a lot of drain, well-drained soil, which is why we added the sand. And you wanna keep them moist, but not soaking wet because you can rot the crown. So, and also they will spread. That's why I have put these in a raised bed 
Uh, I'm hoping that now that I've got these started, if you've noticed, I put the biggest plant in the center because I'm hoping that will drop seeds and I will just keep having foxglove year after year after year. They are a biannual, which means that you'll see this green growth the first year and then the second year you will get your flowers. So if I'm doing this right and if it works out the way I have it planned, this should be a bed of foxglove for me now going forward. So um, yeah, all I have to do now is top it with the mulch and then water it in good and we're ready to plant the asparagus. We have watered in our foxglove and as you can see the soil level including the mulch is back up where it needs to be. So compared to what it looks like when we started, it looks a whole lot better. This is the lavender that I grow in the um, blocks, the cinder blocks, which does absolutely great. And this will be pretty in a couple of months. And I actually have some propagating in the kitchen that I wanna put maybe on the other side there. But this should be the lavender and foxglove bed. Now, the only thing that we have left to do is to come over and plant this asparagus crowns. I think there's three in there. There's, there's at least three good ones. So, if you like asparagus, um, this is a perennial vegetable, which means that you plant it one time and it will reproduce year after year after year. Um, they usually don't, uh, you usually won't have asparagus your first year. I think the plants are improving. This is the Martha Washington asparagus. I just always buy that. Um, but anyways, this has overwintered and you see all the good roots there. And this is the soil that I'll be using. It's just potting soil plus fertilizer. I have my five gallon bucket. It likes to be well drained. So I put my holes in there. And when I go to put this in the garden, I'll actually put it up on bricks because you don't want to set it flat on the ground. The water can kind of stay in the pot. And then I'm going to add some uh, ashes from, from a fire. They like potash. So all I need to do is fill up my container, put in my potash and put in my plants and place it and water it in and we'll be done. This is where I have placed my five gallon bucket of asparagus. It likes at least eight hours of full sun a day. And as you can see, I have it up on the blocks that I talked about. And this is spring. It's the perfect time to plant your asparagus. So, you know, I'm choosing to do mine in a container, even though I do have room to do it in the ground. But I'm just hoping that this is going to be um, a better way for me to grow asparagus. And I'll let you know how it turns out, but I appreciate everybody for watching this video. I appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares, and please have a blessed week.